Well today I've decided to do a base station and this time it's the grandstand base station. Let's see whether we can get a bit more of it on the picture. And this is plugged in right now and I can see no clock display so there you go. Now these are a nightmare. Back at the time I tried to get a service manual and that wasn't possible, all that there was was a circuit diagram in the back of the um, instruction book. So, I've got a half decent blown up photocopy of that. It's a very unusual circuit. This board is made, these are made by Saruga in Japan. Saruga these days seem to make navigational aids and that kind of electronics for the marine. Uh, industry and at the time I, I would say this was high quality but by today's standards it isn't high quality and the big letdown is that the double sided printed circuit board inside isn't plated through so one track to the other these days they'd be plated through in gold but um, unfortunately this just has wire links which go dry joint and the trouble is the whole of the IF and the VCO is in a little um, tin can which is filled with wax and you can spend many a happy hour with a hairdryer trying to get the wax out to get to the link to try and stop the dry joints so I can't say I've had that much, much success with these and so we'll see whether we can do anything with this one now this is the grandstand as I say there's also the Wagner, when Grandson went out of business, the Wagner bought what stock was left. These originally were about £229. I think Wagner dumped them for about 110 or something like that. You will also find, and I've shown you before, the Atron or the Atron, which was a converted Dutch set. It's basically the same chassis, but it was made for the Dutch market, 22 channels, half a watt. Uh, and then um, altered a little bit to... Um, uh, to come in line with the 4 watt uh, 40 channel um, requirements of uh, of the UK and I can't say any of those are successful that I've seen. The other snag is that the phase lock loop chip in these is the UPD 2812C which is an NEC general purpose device and they were already obsolete when these were made in 1981. I assume Saruga was sat on a bucket load of them. So we will open this up and we'll see whether there is anything we can do with it. Right, well we're greeted with the usual uh, innards, so that's one thing, because I've, <laughs> I've opened some of these up and they've got unusual innards, uh, because people have messed about with them. I even got one turned into a public address amplifier somewhere. Uh, and that's all it does. Right, you've got a pretty conventional power supply arrangement here on the left and of course I'll be needing to look at that um, it's got a relay to do the switching because of it having the clock facility so the transformer is running all the time that's powering the, the clock and then when you switch it on the relay clicks in and you it then applies the um, 12 volts or 13 volts whatever it is to the rest of the radio and the rest of the radio is this uh, Saruga chassis as used in the grandstand Gemini and the telecoms TC9000 so under this um, tin here you've got the IF and the synthesizer and that's all filled with wax and you've got a corresponding can on the other side which you've also got to take off if you do anything. It's got an unusual um, audio IC. On the back of the radio you've got a tape recorder socket which is very useful and it works well but bear in mind it only records the received signal, it doesn't record your transmitted signal which is a shame because you wish it have taken a bit of a um, a feed off to that uh, for that purpose. Now that transistor doesn't look original. No. Anyway, what we're going to do is find out why this power supply isn't running in this set, and then we'll take it from there. 
This is my own personal property from my own collection. It's not a customer's. Okay, the mic this has come with is a Altai DMP510 with no battery door and it's got a battery in it which says on it ultra power super heavy duty and I did just put the battery on the meter and the battery actually works which is more than the white mic does because it doesn't go into transmit so it's clearly not wired for this radio so what we'll do is put an ordinary standard mic and I'll just wire it for this radio right now well it looks like this radio seems to basically work and that's uh, something I've not seen on one of these before uh, certainly not for a number of years so I've done a standard mic and the wiring is actually the same as a Uniden and this type of radio receives without a microphone plugged in because of it having relay switching and the, uh, the relay for the uh, transmit receive is that just there so I will now just put this into transmit and we'll see if it does something like um, and it's doing what straight away it's doing 3 watts slightly off frequency but within uh, tolerance and it's receiving as you can hear especially if I turn the volume up uh, 3 microvolts, 1 microvolt just about picking up 0 0.3 microvolt anyway I'll go through this with you as best I can I can't do VCO setup because uh, it's a very unusual synthesizer and uh, I think we'd really have to look through the data books of a bygone era to be able to uh, to do that. One of the snags which I've come across time and time again on this is this 8 volt rail. I'll just see if I can zoom in, I forgot the width to do that. Just a bit. And there is a regulator arrangement on this side of the circuit for the 8 volts. And you find that a lot of the snags are because the 8 volt rail is missing. And there's an unusual transistor there which is TO92 case, but is actually bigger. You know, you know in an Amstrad, the, the driver transistor is a 2SC2086, which is TO92 case, but it's bigger than normal. Well, it's like that, but it's a totally different transistor. And we did order some of those in once because of uh, something I have repeatedly have. And that can often be a reason why you don't have an 8 volt rail. And I'm just going to put my meter on this uh, radio and uh, we'll just see whether we've got um, an 8 volt, that's 8 volt rail that's somewhere near 8 volts. If I can remember which bit it is. I'm going to have to dig that uh, circuit diagram out, aren't I? Or is it a 9 volt rail? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll get the circuit diagram and I'll just uh, go through the uh, what alignment I can with you. On to alignment, I will just say why it was dead. Uh, when I opened the, uh, unscrewed the mains plug, Somebody had pinched the fuse out of it, so I presume they'd needed one for the hairdryer or whatever. So a fuse in the plug and uh, it brought the power onto it. Right, carrying on with the transmit on the grandstand home base. Made myself a little diagram up. I do have a voltage chart. And I do have an A3 circuit diagram. But some of it's still guessing games. It's a complex synthesizer arrangement. I need to look up the data on the UPD2812 synthesizer in order to come up with a VCO method. Now it looks to me like there's a the master oscillator runs at 10.245, and then there is an oscillator for the 10.695 IF which is just down there and that appears to be non-adjustable but the output of it goes to T5 and T5, let's go back to my notes 
is the adjustment there. Then we've got a what is it, 13.6162 oscillator, which is the adjustment for which is there. So interesting arrangement. As I say, I'm convinced they used up a surplus stock of these because anyone normal would have used the Sanyo LC7137 or the Toshiba TC9119. But there you are, Saruga New Best. So, seeing as this works, we don't have to delve too deeply into it. What I don't want to end up doing is putting the transmit off on frequency and ending up with the receive off frequency. So I'll be checking that with a marker oscillator because I'm going to find out in a second whether I can find my uh, normal trimming tool whether the coil L13 puts the whole thing on frequency or whether the receive is done separately with L10. I'm going to find that out in a moment. I'll just pause the video while I find the trimming tool. Well, first of all, I'm going to check that the power supply voltage is somewhere near. Now, bearing in mind it's a mobile chassis, a lot of mobile chassis are supposed to be working at peak performance at 13.8 volts. So, I'm just going to put the test probe on the output of the, out of the power supply, and that's actually 13.28. Now, I'm happy that that's where it should be. It's certainly greater than 12.8, which I'd want it to be and it's less than 13.8 in a bit so I think that's fair enough obviously there's a preset to the in the power supply for adjusting where the power supply is so that's that first test done there's nothing worse than tuning a setup to discover you overlook doing the power supply and of course when you when they've got built-in power supplies that can be one of the dangers well, it seems apparent to me that the first thing we need to be looking at on transmit is Transformer 1. And Transformer 1, according to my notes, is this one here. So I'm not going to do the ones which are possibly, uh, I don't want to upset, because I'm not fully aware of how the mixture arrangement works. So we're going to put the radio into transmit and it's just doing 2.9, 2.8, it's dropping nicely, 2.5 watts. And that straight away brought it up to uh, 2.8. Now what I've next done is to put L10, which is down there, I've adjusted that very carefully to bring the transmitter onto frequency. But I will be checking that the receiver is on frequency with a marker oscillator later on on the receive video, just in case it's one of those sets where you've got separate ones for transmit and receive. So there's a lot of unknowns with this. I when did I last see one for repair? I don't know, years and years and years ago, and we only just did a repair, and that was about it. There wasn't much information, and uh, I think um, most um, engineers will shy away from them because of that, and with it being an unusual arrangement. But we've certainly got to try, especially when it's uh, my own one in my own collection. So, we've now set, we've now got three watts coming out of it, and what we're now going to do is move from T1, which is where we were, and we're going to move to L7. And L7 is, just point it out, the one there. So, using the plastic hexagonal tool, we've peaked that and that's now doing 3.2 watts. Moving on to L4, Go for the yellow tool which is behind that transistor. We've now got 3.6. 
And I think that is it. Just one moment. Okay, I've been through that two or three times and we've now got the transmitter to 3.8, 3.9 watts. And I'll just drop the uh, trimming tool on the floor. Right, having got the power a whisk away from 4 watts, what we'll now do is set the RF meter on the front panel. When we key up, what is it? Well, that's handy, it doesn't read at all. Hmm. I notice none of these meters light up either. Right, well, the TX meter is. the variable resistor there at the back. Now, so first of all, I'll just uh, clean that just in case that's what's up with it. That looks like we've got a, or ah ha, are we new? No, just make sure I'm not going to switch somewhere for this. Oh, it's got low power on this radio, just uh, see where that is um, it's not adjustable and it is 350 milliwatts so that's not far out so I'm just looking at the switches just in case I need to switch the power meter into circuit we've got SWR set yeah there must be something up with the meter so I'll just look into that well I've had to take the front panel off to sort out this meter problem Having taken the meter movement out from its uh, the way it's uh, screwed into the uh, chassis and then unsoldering it from the back, I discovered that the um, escutcheon at the back of the meter had come unglued um, and so it was fouling up the actual physical mechanism. So the meter wasn't faulty and a dab of glue and putting it all back together sorted that. Whilst I got the front off, which is currently running through the company dishwasher, I was able to replace this uh, switch which was snapped off. Unfortunately I've had to sacrifice uh, one of our less cosmetically perfect one of these to do that. Uh, I didn't want to do that but where do you get parts from? So that's That looks about right, 2.2. Just give it a quick whistle test. <whistles> yep, and the Warlow. Wallow. Yep, that's fine. That's not going above 2.5. As I say, if it did need adjusting, it's the preset variable resistor through the can there. Now, we were going to set the meter, weren't we? Um, we know we've got 4 watts coming out of the radio. We still have 4 watts coming out. So now we've got the meters. I've replaced the lamps in those. And we now want that to read... Whoa, it's going right over the top, isn't it? So the preset is the one at the back there. So I would think that we want to be spot on that line. I would think so. Let's go to low power. And we still get a, a deflection. So I think that concludes everything on the transmitter side of the Grandstand base station.